There have been many arguments over the Sabbath day and when it is to be observed. Some will argue that it's to be observed by the lunar calendar. Some will even claim it's on Thursday. Some will claim it's to be done on Sunday because of the resurrection. Because modern churches have adopted Sunday as the supposed Sabbath day. Because the day was moved by Constantine. Quote, Sunday was another work day in the Roman Empire. On March 7, 321, however, Roman Emperor Constantine I issued a civil decree making Sunday a day of rest from labor, stating, All judges and city people and the craftsmen shall rest upon the venerable day of the sun. End quote. Quote, on March 7, 321, Sunday, which was sacred to Christians as the day of Christ's resurrection and to the Roman god Sol Invictus, was declared an official day of rest. On that day, markets were banned and public offices were closed, except for the purpose of freeing slaves. End quote. So to begin with, Constantine was a worshiper of the false god Sol Invictus, and he even had him on his coin from AD 306 to AD 337 shown here. Now this was after he had made the change to the Sabbath day in the year 321, showing that he did this for his god Sol Invictus. It was never about our Messiah. Modern churches claim that they keep the Sabbath on Sunday. But I say that they've all but abolished the Sabbath day because they do not keep it on Sunday as a Sabbath day of rest because they go to church, then they leave, eat lunch at a restaurant, then go home, watch the ball game, or mow the lawn. So that being said, they have abolished the Sabbath day and have not moved it at all. The argument about the Sabbath and what day it is on will probably continue until our Messiah returns. And that is why Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, Let no one therefore judge you in eating, or in drinking, or respect of a festival, or a new moon, or Sabbath, which are shadow of what is to come, but the body of Messiah. Is Paul saying that we should not honor the commands and keep Yahuwah's festivals? Well, I'm going to say this in Paul's words. Let it not be. On the contrary, Paul is telling us that the meaning behind all of the festivals and the Sabbath is our Messiah, Yahusha, and that any argument about keeping certain days in the such are arguments of the flesh and not of the spirit. This video is not intended to shame anyone for keeping the Sabbath day on a certain day. For if you are keeping the Sabbath, then you are already moving in the correct direction. And if you do not keep the Sabbath, then my hope is, by the end of this video series, you will want to join in and keep this wonderful day that we set aside to rest in our Savior, Yahusha HaMashiach. I titled this video, The Manna from the Shamayim, because there is an allegory in the first time the Sabbath was kept, and our Messiah elaborates on this parable in Yochanan John chapter 6. But before we get to that, let's look at Exodus 16 when the Sabbath was first established. Shemoth Exodus 16.3 And the children of Israel said to them, if only we died by the hand of Yahuwah in the land of Mitzrayim, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to satisfaction. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to put all this assembly to death with hunger. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, See, I am raining bread from the heavens for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day in order to try them, whether they walk in my Torah or not. And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, 
and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moshe and Aaron said to the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that Yahuwah has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And in the morning you shall see the esteem of Yahuwah, for he hears your grumbling against Yahuwah. And what are we that you grumble against us? And Moshe said, In that Yahuwah gives you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to satisfaction. For Yahuwah hears your grumbling, which you make against him. And what are we? Your grumblings are not against us, but against Yahuwah. And Moshe said to Aaron, Say to the congregation of the children of Yisrael, Come near before Yahuwah, for he has heard your grumblings. And it came to be, as Aaron spoke to the congregation of the children of Yisrael, that they looked towards the wilderness, and see, the esteem of Yahuwah appeared in the cloud. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, I have heard the grumblings of the children of Yisrael. Speak to them, saying, Between the evenings you are to eat meat, and in the morning you are to be satisfied with bread, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim. And it came to be that quails came up at evening and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lie all around the camp, and the layer of dew went up, and see, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round surface as fine as frost on the ground. And the children of Israel saw, and they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moshe said to them, It is the bread which Yahuwah has given you to eat. This is the word which Yahuwah has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's need, an omer for each being, according to the number of beings. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered, some more, some less. And they measured it by omers, and he who gathered much did not have too much. And he who gathered little did not have too little. Each one gathered according to his need. And Moshe said, Let no one leave any of it until morning. And they did not listen to Moshe. So some of them left part of it until morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moshe was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, each one according to his need. And when the sun became hot, it melted. And it came to be on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moshe. And they said to them, This is what Yahuwah has said. Tomorrow is a rest, a Sabbath, set apart to Yahuwah. That which you bake, bake. And that which you cook, cook. And lay up for yourselves all that is left over to keep until morning. And they laid it up until morning as Moshe had commanded. It did not stink, and no worm was in it. And Moshe said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahuwah. Today you do not find it in the field. Gather it six days, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there is none. And it came to be that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, How long shall you refuse to guard my commands and my Torah? See, because Yahuwah has given you the Sabbath, therefore he has given you bread for two days. On the sixth day, let each one stay in his place. Do not let anyone go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now to understand the allegory in this, we need to go back to verse 5 and verse 6. And it shall be on the sixth day, that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moshe and Aaron said to the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that Yahuwah has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. The sixth day represents the six thousandth year, which is the harvest of mankind before the beginning of the reign of Elohim, when Yahusha returns. It shall be in that time that many more will return to Yahuwah, and many will turn away. This marks the beginning of the harvest. It will be in the evening, as mentioned in verse 6, that Yahuwah shall bring us out of Mitzrayim in the second exodus. 
because even today declares his plan of redemption for his people. The day begins at dark, because when darkness is filled up upon the earth, and wickedness is filled up, the error of man will end, and his judgment will come. And just as the morning brings forth new light, he will bring the true light upon the earth. He gives bread in the morning. This is the word that we receive each day. And we meditate on this word until evening. The meat is the understanding of his word that we get from spending time with our wonderful creator. Our Messiah explains this in Jokanon John chapter 6 when the crowds came to him. So they said to him, What should we do to work the works of Elohim? Yahushua answered and said to them, This is the work of Elohim, that you believe in him whom he sent. So they said to him, What sign then would you do, so that we see and believe you? What would you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it has been written, He gave them bread out of the heaven to eat. Therefore Yahushua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Moshe did not give you the bread out of the heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread out of the heaven. For the bread of Elohim is he who comes down out of the heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Master, give us this bread always. And Yahushua said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not get hungry at all, and he who believes in me shall not get thirsty at all. But I said to you that you have seen me, and you still do not believe. All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and the one who comes to me I shall by no means cast out. Because I have come down out of the heaven, not to do my own desire, but the desire of him who sent me. This is the desire of the Father who sent me. All that he has given me, I should not lose of it, but should raise it in the last day. Notice that in verse 39 he refers to raising all that he has given in the last day. This is the resurrection of all of his followers to live during the millennial reign in the 7,000th year the day of a Sabbath. Verse 40, And this is the desire of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should possess everlasting life, and I shall raise him up in the last day. Therefore the Yahudim, who were grumbling against him, because he said, I am the bread which comes down out of the heaven, and they said, Is this not Yahushua the son of Yosef, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down out of the heaven? Then Yahushua answered and said to them, Do not grumble with one another. No one is able to come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I shall raise him up in the last day. It has been written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by Yahuwah. Every one then who has heard from the Father and learned comes to me. This is the true meat in the evening, that we have a deep spiritual understanding given to us by the true bread of Yahushua HaMashiach. Verse 46 Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from Elohim. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me possesses everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of the heaven, so that anyone might eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of the heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he shall live forever. And indeed, the bread that I give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Yahudim, therefore, were striving with one another, saying, How is this one able to give his flesh to eat? Yahushua, therefore, said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the son of Adam and drink his blood, you possess no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses everlasting life, and I shall raise him up in the last day. 
Eating his flesh is reading and spending time in the word, for Yahusha is the word who was made manifest, and his blood is the blood of the covenant that was shed for the sins of mankind. Verse 55, For my flesh is truly food, and my blood is truly drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood stays in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of the heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and died. He who eats this bread shall live forever. So as you can see so far, the Sabbath has a deeper meaning than the day we keep. This is why we rest in Him, because He is coming back to give us true rest. This is why we do no work on the Sabbath. It is because in the end of days we will be saved from the slavery of the system of money and the system of the beast. The Sabbath is to be kept Kodesh, for it will be in the 7,000th year when Yahusha returns when he gives us a renewed body and makes us Kodesh. Shemoth Exodus 20 verse 8 Remember the Sabbath day to set it apart. Six days you labor and shall do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of Yahuwah your Elohim. You do not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day, and set it apart. Shemoth Exodus 31.12 And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, And you, speak to the children of Israel, saying, My Sabbaths you are to guard by all means, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, to know that I, Yahuwah, am setting you apart. And you shall guard the Sabbath, for it is set apart to you. Everyone who profanes it shall be certainly put to death. For anyone who does work on it, that being shall be cut off from among his people. Six days work is done, and on the seventh is a Sabbath of rest, set apart to Yahuwah. Anyone doing work on the Sabbath day shall certainly be put to death. And the children of Yisrael shall guard the Sabbath to perform the Sabbath throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant between me and the children of Yisrael. It is a sign forever. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Notice in verse 14, it says that anyone who does work on it will be cut off from among his people. Also, it is written that we are not to buy or sell. Nehemiah 10.31 And that if the peoples of the land bring wares or any grain to sell on the Sabbath day, we would not buy it from them on the Sabbath or on a set-apart day, for we would forego the seventh year in the interest of every hand. In the end of days, it is Yahuwah who will set us apart and make us Kodesh and make us his people. In the end of days, the beast system will arise, a system that you must accept the mark in order to buy and sell, and this will be a time of endurance for Yahuwah's chosen people. We are to look to Yahuwah to bring us food during the tribulation period and rest in him. Just as it says not to buy and sell on the Sabbath, we will not be able to do so in the seven-year tribulation. It is also written that we are not to kindle a fire on the Shabbat. Shemot Exodus 35.3 Do not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. This is because we are not to kindle vengeance in our heart, for it is written, Vengeance is mine and repayment. At the time their foot slips, for near is the day of their calamity, and the matters prepared are hastening to them. Deuteronomy 32:35. In the seven thousandth year, the day of Shabbat, Yahuwah will kindle the fire to judge mankind for not following his commandments. 
Yermiyahu, Jeremiah 17:27. But if you do not obey me to set apart the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden when entering the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I shall kindle a fire in its gates, and it shall consume the palaces of Jerusalem, and not be quenched. Second Peter 3:7. And the present heavens and the earth are treasured up for the same word, being kept for fire, to the day of judgment and destruction of wicked men. But, beloved ones, let not this one matter be hidden from you, that with Yahuwah one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Sabbath represents the seventh day, the last day of creation, when our Father brings us His true rest, and makes us set apart. We are not to kindle a fire in our hearts for those who take up the sword, shall die by the sword. We are to live by the example given to us by Yahusha, who is led away captive, but lifted no hand against his captors. 2 Peter 3.9 Yahuwah is not slow in regard to the promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards us, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahuwah shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with intense heat, and the earth and the works that are in it shall be burned up. Seeing all these are to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? in a set-apart behavior and reverence, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of Elohim, through which the heavens shall be destroyed, being set on fire, and the elements melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we wait for a renewed heavens and a renewed earth in which righteousness dwells. Like a bride waiting for the bridegroom, we keep the Sabbath and his festivals. These are the rehearsal dinners and the practices to prepare us for the return of our Messiah in the 7,000th year. 2 Peter 3.14 So then, beloved ones, looking forward to this, do your utmost to be found by him in peace, spotless, and blameless, and reckon the patience of our Master as deliverance as also our beloved brother Shaul wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him, as also in all his letters speaking in them concerning these matters in which some are hard to understand, which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do also the other scriptures. Peter was referring to the time of the end in the 7,000th year that comes after the sixth day, the return of our Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach. And this is exactly what Paul wrote in Colossians 2.16, Let no one therefore judge you in eating or in drinking or in respect of a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of what is to come but the body of the Messiah. The Sabbath, the festivals, the ritual cleansing, the sacrifices are all a shadow of what is to come, the body of our Messiah, returning to gather together all those who follow His commands. So as you can see, the Sabbath is much more than just a day we observe. It has a deep spiritual meaning that we set aside to honor our Heavenly Father as we await the return of his Ben, Yahushua HaMashiach. The Pharisees argued about days and sought to kill our Messiah over work being done on the Sabbath. They were hung up on the flesh, and the works of the flesh blinded them from the true spiritual meaning of the Shabbat. In the second part of this series, we will dive into those parables given to us by our Messiah for a deeper understanding of the Sabbath. Thank you all for joining us for this study of the Sabbath. And like I said before, this study isn't to shame anyone for keeping the Sabbath on a certain day. It is to help show the deeper meaning. And also, 
It is in hopes of bringing others to reserve this day to Yahuwah and to set it apart. Paul wrote about this in Romans chapter 14 verse 5. One indeed judges one day above another. Another judges every day alike. Let each one be completely persuaded in his own mind. Thank you all for joining us for this study. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. Shalom.